A chemical engineering professor and department chair at Texas Tech is developing an indoor COVID-19 detector. Geraldine Jerry Bate joins us now with more on the project. Good morning, professor. Good morning, Lauren. How are you? I'm well, thank you. I understand you go by Jerry, so is it okay if I call you Jerry? Perfect. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So you received a grant, I think close to a million dollars to develop this indoor detector that's similar to um, a carbon monoxide detector. Can you tell us about your work and how this all came about? Yes. Uh, yes. So uh, this is basically a very unconventional way to uh, detect viruses that we have come up with. Uh, it's basically uh, a sensor that can detect the SARS-CoV-2 uh, within less than a second. And, and we did a lot of work already uh, with the detection method with uh, saliva and in water. And so far we had a 100% specificity. And then what we're doing right now is adapting the technique so that we can capture it in air and we can monitor and provide a more safe environment uh, for everybody. Wow. So would there have to be a certain amount of virus in the air for this detector to to pick it up? Those are excellent questions. Uh, we have very, very uh, strict metrics uh, to address. Uh, right now, uh, we, we are basically in the one particle per liter, and uh, we aim about bringing a one order of magnitude lower than that. So we are very excited uh, because it's what we believe is the lowest detection limit that exists today. And so how do you envision this working? Do you picture it more specifically for schools, businesses, homes? I mean, where do you see the, the practicality, uh, the application of this device? Absolutely. I think it has a, a variety of application. Of course, we want to all make our schools environment more safe. You know, I'm affiliated with a university and we can see how it will make a radical change in terms of protecting the students, the faculty. Uh, you could have it uh, in airports. You could have it in airplanes, right? So imagine that you had an airplane and you do a, a fast check on the air. You don't even have to install it. A flight attendants could have it in her hands before the flight lands. And if, if, if something is detected, you could probably potentially uh, keep that, that fly for further analysis and things like that. I think it could change radically how we are protecting the, our nation and the world. And it's very excited that we have an opportunity to do that. So this would be something where if it, it was detected in the air, let's say an airplane to use your example, those people could then quarantine because they know they've obviously been exposed. Is that how you see it? That is a possibility, absolutely. And that could make you actually do things much faster, right? Because therefore, instead of testing everybody and requiring all the tests, you could actually have uh, based that to make further decisions as they come and allow people to move faster in airports. And at the end of the day, save a lot of money, resources and time and making everybody safe in the whole world. Right. So were you in, were you competing against other professors, universities, scientists in, in getting this grant to develop this? How, how did that come about? Yes, so yes, yes, we did. And, and we're very excited to be part of the finalists and, and I'll be given this opportunity. I know that there are other uh, programs uh, being done in parallel. And I think they are described in the opportunity uh, from DARPA. And they, there is an email address and information that can be provided of who the other grantees were. But my understanding is each technology is different. And you think this is something that can be done by August of next year? Absolutely. I mean, uh, my goal is to do it faster than that. So uh, uh, keeping my fingers crossed and everybody's working ultra hard here <laughs> overnight every time because it's like having, you know, the safety in your shoulders, how we believe we can impact the world. So. Yeah. Would it be something that needed to be changed out or how long do you think one of these monitors could, could last in, in a room? This is part of the evaluation. I mean, ideally, we want to make it as close as possible as today, which carbon monoxide detector sensors, right? But obviously, once you detect that there is a possibility of the virus in the room, obviously, there is going to have to be some disinfection and things like that that need to happen in the room. And uh, the beauty of our, our system is that it should be able to uh, auto-diagnose uh, itself because of the way the technology works. 
And is it something that you see on store shelves for anyone to buy for, for their own personal use? Well, it depends on the model and the size of the dimensions of the room. Of course, if you are thinking about having it in a building, the way it will have to be with the vent and all that is a larger capacity. So you might have to have different monitors, but yes, that's absolutely my hope and the hope that it will be like your carbon monoxide sensor helping you monitor your home. And around the same price? <laughs> We're aiming at that, right? <laughs> that's that's the idea. The way I say, I want to have a piece of uh, Texas Tech heart everywhere in the world protecting it. So. That's what we're working here, and we want to make it as affordable as possible as the technology evolves. <laughs> it was it was very sweet uh, to to read your quote that uh, you, you want the opportunity of Texas Tech's heart everywhere protecting our nation. I thought that was very very sweet. You have a lot of school pride, as uh, indicated by your background there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Professor Bade, thank you so much. Appreciate it, and best of luck on your work. This is very exciting. Thank you, Lauren. Have a great day. You Take care. You too.